So previously we've graphed sine and cosine, so now we're going to graph the other four trigonometric functions, tangent, and then all of the reciprocals, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. Now, for tangent and cotangent, as well as cosecant and secant, the graphs look quite different. Uh, there are asymptotes involved because we have some values that are undefined, um, so we have to kind of think about these a little bit differently as we approach them. But we will start off with a table of values here for the tangent function. And so we can still use our unit circle to help us out, so we might want to have that handy, as well as a calculator, again in radian mode if we want to push buttons to help us generate the values, but I'll be doing those here. So start off with, for tangent of zero, if we take the ratio of y over x at the unit circle at that location, it's going to be zero over one, the y-coordinate is zero, the x-coordinate is one, so our output is zero. So that means our graph is starting at the origin. From there, if we rotate to pi over six on the unit circle, we get a tangent value of root three over three. If we divide the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate, we end up with root three over three after we rationalize, which if we push buttons on our calculator, we get 0.577 as our decimal. So uh, I'm gonna scale this a little differently than when we did the parent graphs for sine and cosine. We'll graph here at one, go up to two, so we'll count by 0.5s along the y-axis. So pi over 6, we're a little bit above a half. When we get to pi over 4, the coordinate's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2 on the unit circle. So that means our ratio is 1, so we're up to 1. When we get to pi over 3, if we divide the y by x uh, coordinate, we get root 3, which is 1.73-ish. So already we're different than sine and cosine because those bounce off of 1 and negative 1. Here we're up to 1.73, so we're right about oh, a little high there. So we're just you know, right about there. And then if we rotate to pi over 2 and we take the xy coordinate at that location, if we divide the y coordinate by the x coordinate from the unit circle, 1 divided by 0, we can't divide by 0, a hole opens up in the universe, we all get sucked in and die. Yes, you even get that joke on video from me. And so we get no solution. And so what we see here is our graph is increasing as we go up and eventually it just shoots off to positive infinity. And so what we have here at pi over 2 is an asymptote. Remember that's a line that the graph cannot cross. It approaches, it gets closer and closer, but it can't cross it. Now, if we keep on rotating around the unit circle, and we go to 2 pi over 3, we're going to get the same result as we get at pi over 3, except it's going to be negative. Same thing is true for 3 pi over 4. We're going to get a negative 1 as our value. At 5 pi over 6, we get negative root 3 over 3, or negative 0.577. And then at pi, if we take the coordinate at pi, we're at negative 1, 0. Now when we divide the y by x, we get zero again. And so if we plot those points there, we're at these locations here. And so we have this branch of the graph here. And so at this point, we've actually graphed the entire cycle of tangent. So instead of taking from zero to two pi to graph the entire tangent graph, like it does for sine and cosine, we only need to go as far as pi. Because at this point, all of our coordinates are going to start to repeat themselves again. And so the graph is just going to repeat itself. So as we continue going forward, we have an asymptote at pi over 2. Pi away from that at 3 pi over 2. We're going to have another asymptote. We're going to end our next cycle at 2 pi. Pi away from the end of the previous cycle at pi. And halfway in between all of the asymptotes and the zeros, the graph is always going to be at one of the 45 degree multiples, which means that the tangent ratio is going to be either 1, as it is at 5 pi over 4 for the third quadrant, or it's going to be at negative 1, as it is for 7 pi over 4, which is in the fourth quadrant. And we can extend the graph going backwards, just like we did for the sine and cosine graphs. Again, at all the over 2's, because the x-coordinate is 0, when we divide y by x, we're going to get 0. At all the multiples of pi, so negative pi, negative 2 pi, we're going to have 0 as our tangent ratio, since the 
y coordinate at those locations is 0. So 0 divided by anything is 0. And then again, halfway in between those asymptotes and zeros, the graph is always going to be at one of the 45s, which means the y coordinate is either going to be 1 or negative 1. And so then we can extend the graph that way. Now the cotangent graph is just going to be the reciprocal of all the outputs of the tangent graph. Instead of dividing y by x from the unit circle, we're dividing x by y. And so the effect of that is highlighted up here. The result is that anywhere where we had an asymptote for tangent, which was at all of the over 2's, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and the same thing in the negative direction, those are going to be zeros now. Because when we flip those x and y coordinates, it's not zero on the bottom, it's zero on the top. On the other hand, the zeros for tangent, which is at all of the pi's, two pi, multiples of pi, that's where we're now going to have our asymptotes. Now at all the 45's, at all the over 4's, at those locations, we, we're always at 1 or negative 1 on our original tangent graph. And so the reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So those points are going to be unchanged. So when we're here at pi over 4, our graph for cotangent is going to be at the same place as it was for tangent. It's going to be at 1. And likewise, at 3 pi over 4, it's going to be at the same place. It's going to be at negative 1. C and C now, as we move across the, these points, we're going down from left to right instead of up. But the shape of the curve is still the same. And so now we can replicate that in all in between all the other asymptotes where halfway in between the asymptotes the graph is at zero and then halfway in between the zeros and asymptotes the graph is going to be at either one or negative one. We can extend that going backwards here and here.